Hello everyone, welcome to City Politics. This is Ashraj Gatti here. Today on our show, we have Srinivas Aravali, Head of Civic Participation, Janagraha. Uh, Srinivas, welcome to our show. As uh, you may be aware of, uh, Assam, Kerala, Puducherry, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, all the states are heading towards polls now. 800 uh, polling aspirants are on the B-line to claim, make their claim for as an elected uh, representative of the people. And along with that, lakhs of people, mostly the youngsters, whom we refer generally as Gen X, you know, they are also coming on the B-line. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of confusion right now, you know, in the mainstream media when we talk about uh, In this context, I just want to talk to you, Shinua, since you have been closely monitoring the candidates, their election manifestos and voters' aspiration, are you able to make out from the manifesto whether the candidates in their manifesto or in their polling speech, are they addressing the core or the right issue that should matter to their constituents? Yeah, it's always a bit surprising to me how the candidates and the parties approach these elections because uh, they seem to be uh, thinking that these elections are happening for some other office rather than the actual office that the elections are happening. And this often leaves the voters uh, a little confused and normalizes uh, something that is not right. Uh, for example, the first time voters, those that have crossed 18 years of age and exercising their democratic right to vote for the first time, are very excited. They are very uh, respond. They want to be responsible citizens. They want to make a difference to the politics of this country. They want to make their voice count. But uh, unfortunately, if you look at the mainstream uh, campaign reporting or whether it is print, electronic or even social media, it doesn't seem to help them in a way to choose or in a way to understand how to choose the best candidate on the ballot. Uh, the candidates themselves present themselves to be of, uh, you know, uh, somebody who can fix their local issues. And even the, the media questions them on that aspect saying, uh, if you get elected, will you fix this pothole? And the candidate will say, you know, the biggest problem in my constituency in such and such. And this is the nature of the conversations. So this all, what happens when this happens is that the younger people, the first time voters think that this is what this election is about. But unfortunately, it's not. It is something else. So we should, I think we should talk about that. You know, what exactly is this election about? Uh, what is at stake here? Why are we electing these people right now? What is their role? And these are the kind of things I think we need to give some information and awareness to, especially the first time voters, Sasha. Why exactly are we voting the legislators, councillor or even the MPs? How, how does the system work? I think you just uh, asked the question that is on the mind of many young people and uh, I hope I can I can uh, do justice to this question. First of all, we all studied uh, the civics in until 10th, 10th standard, uh, you know, we studied how the system of governance works and all that. It's a good time right now to reflect on that. What is our Indian uh, system of governance, right? First of all, India is a republic. A republic means that it is a it is a system. It's a governance of the people. People are supreme powers. So that means people are the government. There is nobody else. There is no king. There is no British. There is nobody else that is ruling over us. It is us, the people. Now, but then there are too many of us. So how do all of us rule a particular city? If, if Bangalore is ruled by the people, that means 1.2 crore people will rule Bengaluru. How is that possible? That's a very difficult thing to do. Similar, now you can imagine for the state or, or the country. So the constitution, what we did is that we created a three tier system of governance with clear separation of powers so that we can hold different people responsible for different parts of governance. And very simply said, these three tiers are central government, state government, and then the local government. The central government is very straightforward. Everybody understands it. It's the government of India headed by the prime minister of India. Now, who is our representative? If you live in Mangaluru, Harsha, you have a representative in the central government and that is your MP. So when you cast your vote for MP, you are sending somebody to make your voice heard in Delhi, in the parliament, in the Lok Sabha. That is MP election. We are not, that election happened, last happened in 2019, and the next one will happen in 2024. So we'll discuss the role of MP at another time. What is the election happening right now that you're referring to? The elections in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal, Assam, Puducherry are for the state assembly. Now the state assembly is the 
second tier of governance this is the government of tamil nadu government of kerala government of west bengal this is the body that these elections are happening who are we electing in our system we don't have a direct election to a prime minister or a chief minister we elect representatives to this government who are called mps in the case of lok sabha or mlas in the case of uh, state assembly mla stands for member of legislative assembly so all the first time voters in tamil nadu are simply electing their mlas in the constituency they live in they are not voting for a party they are not voting for a, a chief minister but they are voting for one of the candidates who is on their ballot paper or on the evm the third tier of governance is the local government again here there is urban government and rural government but in an urban government scenario there is a municipal corporation or municipality and there your representative is called a councillor or a corporator this is the third tier of governance now the reason we have three tiers of governance is that they do different things for us it's not that there's all these people do the exact same job then why do we need three votes and three representatives they have very clearly defined roles and responsibilities and i think it's important for us to discuss what is the roles and responsibilities of an mla in contrast to the roles and responsibilities of a councillor because often these two things get mixed up especially in a urban setting it seems to be that the mla more or less has a overreaching authority when it comes to local infrastructure you know uh, mla's uh, mla manifestos are has uh, has contents you know they assure roads solid waste management and all these hyper local issues are uh, is mla's role connected with addressing the lifestyle or living conditions of the people in the city or the, the place they represent from or uh, is it something else it is something else and this is this is a this is a very difficult uh, uh, thing to uh, understand because the the whole system is a little bit uh, confused by everybody uh, from the political parties themselves to the candidates and the media itself uh, recently in a, in, a, in another uh, city politics discussion that uh, we were uh, having with uh, some political party representatives one of the party spokesman said is it our job is it our political party's job to explain to voters the difference between mla mp and councillor i don't think it's our job so we do what we do so this is the problem right nobody has a responsibility of explaining this everybody thinks everybody should know and what they don't know they don't know Now, the manifestos clearly are focused more on in, in urban areas especially are focused more on local issues it's a local manifesto about local flooding local potholes local issues and so on and so forth well an mla or mp or anybody ultimately has to work for the sake of the people and make sure that the living conditions are better but it's really not the job of an mla to worry about the status of the roads or the water supply in a given uh, particular area that squarely belongs to the responsibility of the third tier and the third elected representative that you and i vote for and that's the councillor so now the question is if that's not the job of the mla what is the job of mla right that's what we now focus on well the let's look at the acronym mla the l stands for legislative so the mla's job is primarily legislative in nature now what does legislative mean legislative essentially means law making or policy making the laws of the center are laws applicable to the entire india and these laws are related to subjects that are common to india like safety and security of india border protection trade and commerce with other countries science and technology space research these are the national highways airports these are the subjects of interest for the central government now what are the subjects of interest for the state government law and order what are the ways in which we maintain peace and law and order in the state entirely in the hands of the state government that means the mla that you are voting for has to make or amend laws that control the law and order situation of the particular state even more important education public health agriculture fisheries the roads within the state the irrigation what dams to construct how to use the water to convert in a barren lands into farming lands liquor policy 
should should the state sell liquor directly or to private enterprise if you look at different states in karnataka we have private uh, corporate or small traders selling liquor if you go to tamil nadu it is sold through tasmak or a government controlled shops that's their policy in bihar there is a liquor ban and so is in in gujarat now who made all these laws it's not the mps it's not the councillors it is the mlas the mlas make the law whether to do liquor prohibition or not in their state and if there is no prohibition how much tax should be put on that liquor is controlled by the mlas so your vote for the mla will dictate how these policies will shape in the next 5 years for your state that's why the mla election is one of the most important election because not only the laws that they are making uh, change the course of of a particular state it also going to directly affect the lives of crores of people that live in that particular state that's why it's extremely important for the first time voters to clearly understand the subjects of interest the topics on which the mlas will will talk about in the assembly will discuss in the state legislature will highlight represent the voice of the people and therefore change the course of the state so shino uh, since you have touched upon this topic uh, you know you have clearly explained the role of a mp mla and a councillor so does it mean just to be on the uh, clearer side there are there is no uh, hierarchical chain of command between a mp mla and a councillor they are all independent portfolios not in the constitution but in the political system there seem to be a hierarchy fortunately our political parties sometimes treat it like that the mp street like they are bigger than mlas whereas they are not they are just representing another uh, you know it's like saying the orthopedic surgeon is better than the cardiac surgeon yeah. they are both surgeons they are supposed to do different jobs they are both yeah. only important role they play but they are not one is not you know subsidiary to the other or superior than than the the second one so that's how we should look at it the councillors uh in the cities are not exactly legislative in nature their job is to run the city make the city administration run the city and and the the difference between the mlas and mps and councillors also comes from the fact that how many people vote for them there are only 543 mps in the entire country but whereas in the state of tamil nadu alone there are 234 mlas in karnataka there are 224 mlas that means the number of people to mp is lot more people the ratio is much higher than the ratio of say councillor to uh, the voters that he or she represents so therefore the the political understanding or the media understanding is because less people are electing this person called councillor somehow he is not as she is not as powerful as the a uh, other person who's elected for mla by by like say 3 lakh voters and mp is elected by 10 to 15 lakh voters but that is only because of the convenience of that house if 50000 people vote an mp then you will have 10000 mps in india and that you need to build lot bigger parliament house to put all of them together and no discussion can ever happen you cannot come to any conclusions so that's why we decided that in a state of karnataka for example uh there are 28 mps in uh, you know different states have different size of mp number of mps based on the population same goes for the mlas and the councillors is when they are supposed to be in directly in touch with more number of people so therefore less number of people vote their councillors and that is our closest elected corporator you should be able to meet that person frequently in person call them up talk to them demand things all of that you can do the same thing for an mla and mp but then there's going to be 3 lakh people trying to reach the mla so it's going to be much more difficult so the kind of topics you talk to an mla is about the policy of liquor the kind of things you talk about the councillor is about the policy of footpath or how do we reduce dengue in the city next rainy season is coming and every year so many thousands of people are suffering so how shall we fix that proactively and that's a topic of discussion with your councillor not with your mla so to summarize your point just correct me if i'm wrong uh, in case we, uh, corporator is a point of contact for our lifestyle or you know local related issue people have concern regarding road solid waste management they should not be running around the offices of mp or mla but should be straight away heading towards uh, the councillor which would rather make him more accountable will that be the right way to put it 
Correct. Accountability comes from how far you are from the problem. Right. The MP is representing you in Delhi. How how can she or he uh, hold the the footpath? You know, fix the footpath. Right. Today, right. if you see on Twitter, Harsha, a lot of people directly tweet the Prime Minister saying, "Sir, we have a traffic problem in this area." as if he has no other better business to do than to focus on the traffic problem or you know imagine if if 0.01% of indians reach out to the prime minister on a, a traffic problem or a footpath problem will he be able to do anything else sinivas i'm just curious uh, since you are very much in uh, connection with uh, the voter sentiment are the especially the young voters are they aware about these bifurcations or the roles i mean how aware of uh, how, what is the level of awareness you find among the voters now that they're heading for election about these bifurcation of roles it's hard to tell i think compared to a um, few years ago there is a lot more awareness today thanks to social media a lot more people are are interested in learning more about democracy uh, the kind of um, democratic uh, citizen movements that we have seen in the recent past uh, also uh, tell me that a lot more people younger people are taking interest in matters of governance and policy but it is nowhere near and uh, i think the problem is uh, because the 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 loud voices of the campaign uh, drown out the fundamentals the loud voices are always talking who is winning who is leading what is the exit poll will this be will this party uh, get more seats because they have ally, they have an alliance with this other party will all these caste people vote for this party because they are supposed to you know or will how important is religion in is going to be in this district now this is the main conversation if you turn on your television or if you look at the trending topics on twitter it's always like this it's like gambling or a spectator sport as opposed to understanding the real purpose of election so i'm worried that while the the a smaller percentage of young people are really keenly following the politics and the basics of it a larger people are being carried away by this narrative of who is bigger who is stronger who is you know all of these conversations take away the beauty of democracy and i'm deeply concerned with that's part of the reason why we are having this conversation so hopefully some people will will say this and say ha huh, maybe we should put this discussion aside and look at who to vote for based on the job description of an mla you should look at the the skills and the capabilities of that particular candidate to choose who to vote right right uh shrinivas i understand you're busy uh, let me end uh, this with the last question to you so what should be according to you uh, uh, again back to our questions of guidelines for voters you know in the back of the head of the voters especially the youngsters when they go to cast their vote this time i think that's a great question to uh, close this conversation out think of it like this when you uh, pick a candidate you should understand that the person that runs the election campaign the best the most amazing orator the speeches the advertisements and all of that jazz the crowds that they have in the meeting all of these are about winning the elections but those that know how to win the elections don't necessarily know how to govern because the election season lasts for two or three months maybe six months but the governance lasts for the next five years so you should be voting for somebody who you think has the right skills and talent and intent intent is extremely important to govern so try to understand what's the background of this candidate has she been ever elected to office if so what were the accomplishments in the last tenure was she a counselor before contesting for mla if so what's the reputation as a counselor does the social media page of these politicians indicate an engagement with citizens indicate an understanding of the issues of policy making what is the background of this person did 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 she come up in the hard way or was she given a ticket because he or she is simply is a relative of a senior political leader and there is nothing wrong with being a son or a daughter of a political leader but if they are so then do they also gain any political experience before being given a ticket and become a candidate so this is how i will i will look at these things and most importantly these are the state elections so the mlas are going to determine how your state is going to perform for the next 5 years will this person within the list of candidates you have available who is the best equipped to make your state go forward 
who has the right experience skills political maneuverability it's very important to understand the nature of politics it's very complicated they should be able to build consensus with people that they don't agree with these are the characteristics i look for when i choose to vote for one of the candidates on the ballot paper and i think this kind of thing is now easier to do thanks to internet and social media you too can find more about the candidates make a very neutral assessment of different candidates and then decide who to vote for right shrivas uh, shrivas uh, not taking much of your time uh, thank you so much uh, for joining our conversation on uh, city politics on the guideline for new voters uh, thank you vishwa and sandeep on the back end for all the technical support uh, that's it for uh, this uh, episode of city politics Stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Thank you so much. Have a great day.